Welcome back, everybody, to a brand new episode of the Kerwin Elias podcast. I am your host, Kerwin Elias, and today is episode number 22. Today is a special day because we're finally launching our podcast program on YouTube. So now we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, and now on YouTube. And this is an awesome moment because it's an open door that we're starting to see little by little for the podcast world. Even though podcasting has been a very popular thing um, for a few years now, um, the doors are still opening, you know, opportunities are still coming in. And that's why I'm a firm believer of it's never too late to start on something because there's always something new that's going to come out that's going to be able to help people expand their message or their creative work. We're now 22 episodes in. We're four months in from when this podcast started. And basically episodes one through 15 were pure audio. 16 through 21 have been videos exclusively only on Spotify. But now today, starting from episode 22, which is crazy now that I think of it because I have this thing with the number 22, not to be superstitious. Everything I do is depending on God, but this is also another crazy thing that's happening that we're finally opening the doors in this episode to YouTube. So basically, if you're someone that does have YouTube music, now you'll be able to find the podcast in an exclusive podcast Um file. So basically, you now have the option to listen to podcasts on YouTube music, just as you would use Apple Podcasts or Spotify, which is really cool because it's expanding the platform. It's really expanding it. And so basically now on my uh, YouTube channel, you'll be able to see video content that, you know, I will be uploading. There's going to be videos that are going to be non-vlog on my, uh, I mean, non-podcast on my YouTube channel. And so, you know, I plan on sharing a lot of cool things that are behind the scene, basically um, what comes consists of the podcast, how I even work on it, how we even grow in it, because I believe this podcast is just going to only go up and up and up because the goal is for you, the audience. It's to help you learn and grow. And I feel that the content that we bring here is very special and connects with um, the audience in a special way. And I hope you feel that same way. And so that's why if you watch podcasts on YouTube and you prefer YouTube, well, here we are. Here, we can finally start a relationship and get better here. So you can follow me at Kerwin Elias on Instagram, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube. So go ahead. If you haven't subscribed yet on YouTube, make sure to subscribe. It's definitely going to be worth it. And so um, on that note, Let's get on with today's episode, episode 22. Episode 22 right now is a re-upload of a, a past episode that I used to have on my other podcast. This was recorded about last year in the month of July, so this is not an old, old episode, but it's almost a year old, and it's with Prophet Joe Naughton. Prophet Joe Naughton is a woman of God that I've had the pleasure to get to know through Prophet Kathy Leshner, and so I want to introduce this episode once more because it's no longer available on the other channel. I wanted to re-upload it because it was such a blessing to hear her share her testimony, to hear her share all the wisdom and all the experiences that God has given her. And so on that note, we're going ahead to start with that episode. And there's a part two, but that'll come next week. And that's why you got to subscribe. That's why you got to go ahead and join the family here as we continue to grow in our knowledge and in our understanding of who God is, who we are in God, and what is possible through God if we are willing to surrender a lot of things into his hands. We can get better from where we are. Right now is not the end. Today is not an impossibility. Tomorrow is not an impossibility. There is opportunity and there is hope every single day as long as we allow ourselves to be impacted and involved with God in our lives. So on that note, Thank you for tuning in. I love each and every one of you, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. All right. And today we have Prophet Joe Naughton with us. Can we give it up for Prophet Joe in the house? It's so surreal to have you here. We just finished off yesterday a conference, um, you know, New Beginnings, Beyond Sight. And, you know, it was just such a joy to have you here with us. And, you know, you, you've come from so many hours away. And I don't know, what was your take on this whole experience of yesterday and today's service? Yesterday, to see yeah. 
hundreds of young people yeah. gathering. You know, after the pandemic, youth ministries are some of those parts of church life that really suffered a lot. Yeah. Because young people struggled with the isolation, with education not going the way it should have been going. And so a lot of churches have struggled. Yeah. To see this place just full of young people, hungry, yeah, attentive, with their hearts and mouths wide open. It was such a joy. I loved seeing what God is raising up through you. And, and, and you know, and thank you for that. Thank you. You know, it's a, it's a privilege and an honor to be uh, a, a leader here because it's been a journey, as I've shared with you, you know, behind the cameras. I, I It's taken many years, and I think um, it was three years ago. This September, it'll be officially three years when I was ordained pastor. And so, you know, it's so amazing that the entire journey on becoming um, a pastor and leader has been such a blessing. And to be here sitting down with you in front of these cameras, <laughs> we did a conference yesterday, hey, being around you, having a conversation with you to me is surreal. And it just is a testimony of the faithfulness of God. And so thank you for coming here and thank you for taking the time to be part of this podcast because, you know, I, I, I want to get straight into um, the, the, the reality that many people have in their minds is that they think, oh, well, you know, blessings and goodness and open heavens are for people that are pastors, prophets, leaders, but yet we kind of forget that, you know, well, most people forget that you're human, you know, and I believe that's what actually makes you such an amazing messenger of the Lord with how genuine you are. You don't come in, you know, with, you know, like uh, like a, you know, magician here to bring the smoke and air and and get the oohs and ahs. You come very straightforward and you even share a lot of your own personal testimony to show the goodness of God and the glory of God in your life. And so I want to get into the history of Joe Naughton. This is the Joe Naughton interview. So. First off, where is Joe Naughton from and how was her childhood like? Oof, that's two. One big question, one little question. Yeah. I'm from London in the UK. You were born in, born in London? I was not born in London. I was born in a little village uh -huh. in the north of England. Outside of my bedroom window, I would see fields with cows. Yeah. And I was all like, I hated London Yeah. <laughs> as a child. I just thought, no, I would never want to live in that big smoky city. Yeah. Not knowing that God had called me there. Wow. But yes, so I'm from a little village. And you asked, what was your childhood like? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know. So I was born to a mother who, my, my mum is still alive. Yes. But she suffered with mental illness for the first 15 years of my life, she had several breakdowns. Mm -hmm. The first breakdown that she had was after I was born. Oh, wow. And she went into very deep postnatal depression. Mm. And as a result, really was not able to love me, to yeah. hold me. Mm -hmm. She would just leave me and walk away and... Yeah. When I cried and screamed, she would just put her fingers in her ears and run away. Yeah. When I was two, I fell in a pond. We had a pond in our garden. Yeah. I fell in the pond and my mum was watching out the window. And in her heart, she just thought, well, she's better off dying. Mm. Because she's better off not living oh, this wow. life. Yeah. And wow. she, she just left me, you know. But even when we think we've been abandoned, mm -hmm. you know, my brother, my big brother, yeah. he saw what happened and he ran out and he saved me and he wow. rescued my life. So that was when I was two. When I was four, my mother heard voices. She was by this point very seriously mentally ill. Oh, wow. And she heard voices telling her she had to sacrifice my brother, my mm. big brother, who was my knight in shining armor. Yeah. And he woke up in the middle of the night covered in blood. Oh, wow. And the emergency services were called. Um, my mother was tried for attempted murder. Mm -hmm. 
And she was let off on grounds of diminished responsibility and yeah. because of the mental illness. Yeah. And I was sent to live with my grandparents. And really, my childhood had a lot of conflict, a lot of trauma. My dad grew up without his parents. Mm -hmm. He had not known what it was to be loved. He grew up in Africa. Okay. His parents took him there when he was a little boy. Oh, wow. And they just sent him away. And he was three years at a time, he wouldn't see them. Wow. They had their careers. And so they would only call him if he was sick. Oh, wow. So he would be raised by different people. All the time. All the time. So my dad didn't know how to love. Yeah. My mum was mentally ill. Yeah. But we were in one of these families where you have to give the right impression. We never spoke about anything we went through. Mm -hmm. And I got saved when I was 12 years of age. And I had an amazing encounter with Jesus. I was filled with the Holy Spirit when I was 15 years of age. Wow. It was life changing. And I was set on fire for the Lord. Before I was 16 years of age, I had read the Bible cover to cover. Oh, wow. I loved God with all my heart. I was always preaching the gospel to my friends. But then I went away to college. Mm -hmm. And around what age was that? 17, 18? I went away to college when I was 19. 19, okay. And when I went away to college, I was saved. Yeah. But I wasn't healed. Mm. And, that, and, and that's a big thing right there because, um, you know, with that kind of upbringing, you know, I'm sure it was a lot of difficulties that came from the mother's side, from the father's side. And, you know, people search in the mother for comfort. And then there's people that search in their father for, you know, a sense of guidance and, and protection. And with that loss in your life, but yet also still simultaneously having an encounter with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, finding God. Um, I, I, I'm sure there was a lot of things that needed to get healed. So, oh. I, and so what kind of things needed to get resolved when you, well, le let me tell you the story first, because yeah. I went away to college on fire for Jesus, loved him, mm -hmm. but broken emotionally. Yeah. And so within months of being at college, I backslid mm. and I'm a very passionate person. Yeah. And so I don't do anything in small yeah in a small way you go all out so if i'm backsliding i'm yeah. backsliding all out yeah yeah and i went to all the wrong places with all the wrong people and i searched for love in all the wrong places as well yeah and so i was already broken by my childhood yeah but then backsliding messed me up even more what can what convinced you to backslide because like you had a relationship with Jesus and i'm sure the wounds had a lot to do with it this you, is it would you say it, it it was like certain people were able to access you because of those wounds no, able to I, influence I'll you i tell you what i would say mm -hmm. because i had so many rejection issues in my heart ah. i was constantly seeking mm. to be loved I see. And if you're a young woman at college and you're so full of rejection, you yeah. hate yourself. I had, was full of self-hatred. Yeah. And so I was craving attention. Yeah. I was craving love. And I met somebody and he was possibly the most negative influence in my life. Yeah. And... Really, that guy that I met in my first year of college, I can probably trace all my backslidings back to that point. Oh, wow. And wow. this is why it's so important that we value our purity. Yes. And that we value ourselves, because if we know that we're valuable, then we'll know not just anyone is good enough for me. Yeah. Yeah. So I got into this relationship and it lasted on and off five years. Mm, wow. And when I eventually developed the strength, I remember in the, in the darkest days of that relationship, my greatest fear was that I'd marry that man. Oh, wow. I knew he was bad for me. It was a tormenting relationship. And that was my greatest fear. And I remember 
something inside of me because I would still be praying in the spirit. Yeah. I would be crying out to God, but I didn't know how to get out. Yeah. I felt like someone who was had an elastic cord around me mm -hmm. attached to this guy and to just backsliding and just the world. Yeah. And I felt that every time I tried to pull out, I was just bounce back. Mm. And I remember the day when suddenly this strength arose on the inside of me and I had enough strength to end that relationship and to never go back. Wow. And it was a few months after that that I s moved in with some friends that yeah. I'd met at college, some girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And while I was staying with them, I remember a particular day. And the night before, I'd been with these two friends from college who'd met me as a Christian. Yeah. And we were good friends ever since. And they saw me backslide and it broke their heart. But I remember one of them saying to me, Joe, if there's an invisible line on the ground mm -hmm. and that side means you're going to heaven, and this side means you're not. Where are you? And I remember saying, I don't know. Yeah. The following day, I was walking through a park in London, downtown London. And I suddenly started to hear this song I used to sing in my church days. Yeah. And it goes like this. In my life, Lord, be glorified. Be glorified. And I remember hearing that and saying, nothing good could ever come out of me. Yeah. But then I suddenly heard the last line of that song. And it ends with these words. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. And suddenly I had just enough faith. And I remember saying to the Lord, I remember saying, Lord, I can't believe that anything good could come out of me. But I've got enough faith just for today. Wow. So I said, Lord, if you want me back, I'm yours. Wow. And that was how I rededicated my life to the Lord. How old were you at the time? I was, I'm going to have to work it out. I must have been 25 years of age. Wow. 25 years of age. Wow. And I love how you said, I just have enough faith for today. You know, I think there's so many people that can relate to that. You know, I think um, many people have this aspect of, you know, you know, faith is for what's to come. But as the word says, you know, now faith is now faith is now it's in the now. And so the biggest amount of faith that we need is today. Yeah. Faith is the most beautiful and most influential characteristic of the spiritual sense of God that we can use today in the sense of it doesn't, you know, we usually think, oh, faith is for what's to come. Faith is for tomorrow. But faith is especially for what God can do in your life today. Yeah. And so um, you have this encounter with God at the age of 25. And then, you know, wh wh where, where do you begin to grow more? Do you begin to get trained um, you know, to become a prophet, um, what, like usually everybody has a different process. Usually they become the prophet, then get married and then this, or they get married, they become the prophet. What was your story? You fully give yourself to God at the age of 25. What comes next? So I went to Bible college at the time I Bible was working college. for a top 10 public relations company okay. in London, in the United Kingdom. And I was on a great career track. Yeah. And mm. I remember the day I handed in my notice to my boss. Oh, wow. And he sat there and he's ready to offer me more money. Mm -hmm. He's ready to offer me all the perks to try and keep me. And then he said, so wow. what is it you want to do instead? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, I want to go to Bible college. And he said, ah, yeah. I can't compete with God. Mm, look at that. So, yeah. So I went to Bible college. I was there for a year full time and just towards the end of Bible college is when I met my husband. Oh, wow. And when we met, we just both knew that we yeah. were meant to be together. And yeah. 
We were engaged in six weeks. I don't recommend that for others. You met someone and then six weeks later engaged. <laughs> and then married within nine months. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I, I even, even though I think there's a lot of young people that are like, yeah, I, w I want that, you know? <laughs> no, I mean, we did it because it was God's leading for us. Yeah, that but, sounds like um, a movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pe they, people coined a phrase in yeah. London. They mm -hmm. would start to say, oh, it was a bit of a Paul and Joe. A <laughs> Paul and Joe. What? And what they meant was, it's this divine whirlwind. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we got <laughs> married and I joined him. He had just planted the church that we now lead together. Yeah. So I joined him in ministry. But it was really getting married when I started gradually to discover mm -hmm. how much hurt I was still carrying. Wow, wow. You know, I'd gone through all this childhood. I'd had some inner healing. I'd yeah. had some deliverance. Yeah. And I thought I was done. Yeah. I thought I was good. Yeah. But you know what? The up close and personal of marriage yeah. is when you really discover what's on the inside. And, and, and real quickly, you know, some people, uh, um, especially people that are goers of, of church, they end up saying, I've been prayed for. I've been delivered. Why isn't it gone already? But something that you've said is that healing is not an instant thing. No, it's a journey. It's a journey. It's a journey. And, and I, 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 w I want that to be, you know, exhorted more to the people to just to not say that, oh, this pain is going to last you 10 years, 20 years, but to not give the concept either that, oh, you should be fine by now. You know, I think we as human beings look at other people that are hurting and say, why are you still mad about that? Why are you still angry about that? Why don't you just let go? And so um, I love that you mentioned that you've been prayed for, you've been gone through deliverance, but yet why marriage? Why was it that marriage exposed a lot more, that made you realize a lot more, you know? Because when you're in that close, intimate relationship, you discover who you really are. Yeah. That person can touch your nerves. That yeah. person <laughs> exposes what's on the inside of you. Yeah. If you want to know who you are, get married. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't get married to, for someone to make you happy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great one. That's a get great Get married quote. and you'll discover who you really are. You'll wow. discover your insecurities. You know, anytime my husband rushed, hung up quickly, went out off, you know, any time like that, yeah. I felt rejected. Yeah. Because all the issues from my childhood were now just being played out in my marriage. Yeah. Yeah. And um, 10 years into marriage, um, as I got married, I went back into secular work. Yeah. After I'd finished Bible college. The favor of God was surrounding me. I got promoted five times in five years. Wow. I worked for Prince Charles. Oh, wow. I ran events in Buckingham Palace with the Queen, with the Prime Minister, with That's celebrities. Wonderful. Oh, wow. Captains of industry. I got headhunted to sit on the board to become a VP of the world's biggest PR company. Wow. That's awesome. So wow. God was just promoting me, but this yeah. is the thing I want you to hear. Yeah. Ten years into marriage, uh -huh. I'd been praying, Lord, I want you to transform me into the woman who can really fulfill my destiny. Wow. I want to become the woman my husband deserves. Mm. And I would see these pictures of the multitudes, and I kept saying, Lord, make me that woman who can fulfill this vision. Yeah. So 10 years into marriage, 10 years into ministry together with my husband, I'm at lunch at a pastor's conference sitting opposite a prophet. She looks across the table at me. Imagine beginning a prophetic word like this. Mm -hmm. She said, the problem with you, Joe. What a way to start a yeah, word. The, the problem <laughs> with you. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know how to act, honestly. She said, the problem with you, Joe, is it's all about position. Mm. And I remember saying nothing. Yeah. And there's two reasons why I said nothing. Number one, I loved God with all my heart, yeah. with all my heart. But every job title that I've just listed, every achievement mm. gave me a sense of validation. Wow. Even being called pastor yeah. by our people made me feel like I was somebody. Yeah, like some self-worth. It gave me self-worth. And so 
I said nothing, but then she continued. She said, the honest truth is you have never faced the issues from your childhood. And after a little bit of denial, yeah. I suddenly broke down. Yeah. I was in a restaurant, a couple of hundred people eating lunch. I was surrounded by pastors whose opinions meant far too much to me. Mm -hmm. And I broke down and I wept and wept and wept. Wow. As God revealed my truth to me. And my truth was this, if you had to strip away all the job titles, all the roles, all the achievements, just Joe, I'm not enough. And that was the beginning of my healing journey. And it was a journey. I was on my healing journey from that day forth for at least two years, maybe longer. Wow, wow. But this is the thing. Yeah. You see, when we've got, pain, when we've got buried trauma, when we've got unresolved issues, they're like roots. And those roots always produce fruits. And the fruits are things like insecurity, insecurity, yeah. self-consciousness, worrying what people think, yeah. defensiveness, trust issues, yeah. being guarded. These are all just fruits. Mm -hmm. These are all just symptoms that say that we've got these Roots of pain on the inside. Wow. As I went on my healing journey, it was like all the insecurities dropped off. All the fear of human opinion just started to get off me. Yeah. And I came out the other side, because I want to get back to marriage. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, I started to be transformed into a woman that could be a true help me to my husband. Yeah. Our marriage went from having issues mm -hmm. to just being able to joy one another. I became a different kind of mother, a different kind of leader. Yeah. And this is the thing. When we go on a healing journey and we stay on a healing journey and we say, Lord, any time I get hurt, this is my covenant with God. Yeah. You know, relationships, we open up our hearts. Yes. So if you suddenly started saying things about me that hurt me, I would be hurt. Yeah. My, this is my covenant with God. Whenever I get hurt, I will immediately come into your presence to get healed. Wow. And the more that we get healed, every time we get hurt, the more we can just be at ease with the person that God's called us to be. So you asked, how did I become a prophet? Let me tell you. My journey to becoming a prophet was first, I became a prophet of truth. God gave me this ability to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit, to highlight the truth in other people. Mm -hmm. And it was, in fact, Prophet Kathy one day said to me, you're a prophet of love. And it was truth and love that would flow more first than the ability to prophesy. Yes. And, and then everything else flowed out of that. But it wow. all came from my own healing journey. Wow. And, you know, in order to get into that process of healing, it, it, it's like, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a sense of humbleness that is required, a, a confession of, I need help. I need to let go of this. I, I, I have something that I'm holding on to, a problem, and... I believe then you end up searching for the solution, which is Jesus, his love, his mercy. But now, you know, I want to talk a little bit about that process of healing. Is that process of healing um, based on prayer? Is it based on going out into the world and experiencing real life? And, you know, when you get triggered or when you go through a bad moment, you go to the presence of God immediately. Is it reading more of his word or is it an accumulation of very, you know, various things that help us say, all right, I'm getting healed, you know? So I guess that would be my two questions. Number one, what is that specific process of healing that was yours? And two, how did you know there was progress being made? In the book of Genesis, we see the, the marriage between Isaac and Rebecca. Yes. And they were 20 years before Rebecca got pregnant. Yes. 
And then she got pregnant. We're all excited. Mm -hmm. During her pregnancy, something didn't feel right. We don't know what in particular. Yeah. We don't know whether she was in pain, whether she couldn't sleep at night, whether she was just churning mm -hmm. on the inside. But she prayed a monumental prayer. She said, if all is well, why am I like this? So, yeah. my recommendation to anyone saying, I want to be made whole, I want to be restored, is any time you notice a behavior and you think, you know what, I'm oversensitive. Mm -hmm. Say in church, the pastor walked past and he didn't say hello. Yeah. You feel rejected. Yes. Someone forgets your birthday and you feel bad. Yeah. There's a party and you're not invited. Yep. Someone points out a shortcoming and you feel bad. Yeah. See, this shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So any time you feel self-conscious, insecure, any time that you feel like correction is rejection, mm. any time that you're craving a thank you, yeah. go to God and say, if all is well, why am I like this? Yeah. Allow every trigger, every oversensitivity, every moment, if you're reacting in a way and you think Jesus wouldn't react like this, Mm. go to the Lord and say, if all is well, then why? Every time I've ever done that, the Holy Spirit has wow. shone his light into my heart wow. and revealed the why. And, and, and that's something that I love that you just said, you know, re, you know, if I react in a way that Jesus wouldn't react, because, yeah, you know, um, you know, there are people that react more in a sad way. There's others that react a little bit more tempered, you know, and I think, to my, you know, and, and that's a great way of looking at it, like, for me to think to myself, hmm, I don't think Jesus would be thinking the things that he's thinking that I'm thinking of right now, you know, or I don't think Jesus would be thinking of doing what I want to do right now. And I love that measure. You know, it's like a good uh, reference to always look into. And, you know, with with this pain, with, with, you know, going through this journey, going through these triggers, how do you know you're making progress? How do you know you're moving Everything forward? changes. Yeah. I was really insecure. Mm -hmm. I was self-conscious. Yeah. I was afraid of what everyone thought of me. Yeah. I needed you to know about my jobs, mm -hmm. uh, about my achievements. Yeah. And the more I got healed, it all just dropped off. The way you know you're making progress is you see structural change. Wow. And you know, God has had me write a lot of books, and you're yeah. asking me about my books. Yes, yes, and, you and are an author. Thing, I'm an author. And the thing is, there is an anointing for healing. And yeah. one thing I know about every single one of the books I've written is they will help anyone who says, I'm going to read this book, and I'm going to open my heart. It's not going to be more than a page or two before suddenly, no matter which book wow. you pick, you're going to start feeling like the Holy Spirit is, is speaking straight to your heart. Wow. And so we can go on our own journey, but there is an anointing. And I know that God has called me to carry this anointing to help others. And that's why I have to keep writing. That's why I have to keep pumping out resources because there are a lot of hurting people out there. Yeah, there really is. And a lot of people feel almost detached and numb and separated from their pain. And so what you're going to discover when you read my books or watch any of my courses, I've got video courses and all sorts of different things. Yeah is God's going to meet with you, with anyone who does this, and he's going to start that healing journey. Wow. And, and, and you, know, one, you know, one thing is that you said that you're healing because you begin to notice so many changes, structural changes. Um, I have probably been, you know, a victim of this type of mentality where, you know, I think to myself, you know what, like, oh, I'm not crying anymore, so I must be stronger. Oh, I, you know, I don't care what people think, and I don't mean it in a, 
oh, people's words do not have an influence over me, but more in a spiteful, hateful way. I don't care what anyone thinks about me. I don't really care what they, you know, how do you avoid that type of coping, you know, because it's more, that's more a little bit what I would call aggressive. It's a great question. Yeah. And the first thing, tears. Tears. God Let it out. <laughs> created tears as a release mechanism. Let yeah. me put it really bluntly. Yeah, please. We get toxins physically out of our bodies by yeah. urinating. Yes, correct. We get emotional toxins out of our souls by weeping. Wow. You look at the strongest leaders in the Bible. Joseph carried, cried seven times in just seven chapters, so loudly mm. his neighbors heard, yeah. so long his cheeks were stained red. Wow. He cried in his brother's arms, in his father's arms. Possibly one of the greatest leaders Israel ever had. Yeah. King David cried so long, all night long, in Psalm 6, that he wet his mattress. Wow. Jeremiah wept. Paul the Apostle, Acts 20, wept. Jesus, of course. You see, when we say, I'm not going to cry, we're actually trying to shut down a God-designed mechanism wow. for releasing pain. Wow. And so, listen, why would God say, and it's in the Bible, it's not just some fable, yeah. but I hold your tears in a bottle. Yeah. If every tear wasn't precious to the Lord, it doesn't even just say that. It says that he holds our tears in a bottle and he writes about them. Wow. You look at it in his book. The only way I can interpret that Wow. is that the God of heaven and earth journals when you come to him wow. and you pour out your pain before him. Wow, I love that so much. And wow, you know, because society has created a perception, especially, um, you know, towards men and especially for people that grow more in age, they say, you know, crying's for children or they say crying's for, you know, the immature, crying is for this and that. But, you know... Um, crying is a God design. And crying I, I is that. for a leader that's as great as Joseph, as great as King David, as great as Apostle Paul, as great as our Savior. Yeah. Crying is for every man. Yeah. And, and you know, as a, as a belief of mine is, is that the more vulnerable a leader is willing to be to Christ with all their emotions, the more higher the chance there is for them to actually grow and actually heal and move forward. So at the moment, you might seem like a mess. You might seem like you don't have it together, but it's the vulnerability and in giving into God's hands that actually is the beginning point of finding growth and actually moving forward as an individual, first as a child of God, and second as an individual that can help other people go through that process that you went through. And so, you are an author. You started writing. What got you into writing? Other than, of course, the necessity of the people. But were you an author? Did you write when you were younger? Well, how did that come about? I did marketing and communications in my career. Okay. No, that, that wasn't how. One day I was reading the Song of Songs. Okay. And as I'm reading it, literally everything was exploding and I'm just writing, writing, writing the depth of revelation. I'm seeing oh, this wow. Shulamite woman, mm -hmm. a broken woman gone through yeah. some kind of abusive relationship with her brothers. I'm seeing verse after verse, page after page in the song of songs, how God took this precious woman on a healing journey in the arms and love of the King. Mm. And my husband came back from, he was out. He got back later that day. And I said, look at what God gave me. And he just starts to read it. And he looks back and he said, Joe, that's a book. Wow. So I started to write in obedience. He said, yeah. it's a book. I said, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and I love to write. Wow. I enjoy it now. So I've written eight, 
nine nine books i'm wow. working on Another one at one. the moment yes I, well i'm wow. always i've always got about three or four on the go wow but i always know which is the next one yeah so I'm working on the next one, and I have another few on the go as well. Oh, wow. You write them, type them? What do you... My iPad. Yeah, iPad. Because I have, I have my iPad everywhere I go. Yeah. So if suddenly I get something, pull it out. It just comes to your mind. And get it down and then pop it away again. And, and do you write it already in a structured way? Or do you just write no. everything and then clean no, it up? No, I just start writing. You just You know, start. anyone who wants to write a book... Yeah. Start writing. Yeah. Thank God that we get to write in this age, you know, the yeah. digital age. Yeah. When Prophet Kathy wrote her books, she wrote them yeah. all longhand yeah. with a pen and paper, yeah. you know, and then her mum used to type it up from the oh, pen wow. and paper and do the editing side, oh, wow. you know. But we get to be able to type, which yeah. means you can start and you might not realise you're actually writing the last chapter or you're writing mm. a paragraph inside the fourth chapter. I just write yeah. and then the structure will unfold. Sometimes I think I've started one book and it turns into something different. Yeah. And so I just start. Yeah, wow. And by God's grace, I keep writing. Wow, wow. And I know you can, will because I believe the Lord just keeps giving you more and more and more. And so now tell me about your um, how, how would I say a repertoire reputation so far, you know, how many nations have you traveled? How many places have you been to? Well, I asked you when you first came here, how many states have you been to in the United States? Yeah, so I haven't added up, but let me, let me try with the U.S. I mean, I've ministered in California, Texas, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, that's the ones I can remember. All and right. then outside, I've ministered um, in South Africa. I'll start with Africa. So yeah. South Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Ghana. I've ministered in Dubai. I ministered at the biggest church in the Middle East. Oh, wow. I was at the biggest church in the Middle East, and I was the first ever woman that they'd ever had preach in 24 years in a culture oh, wow. where women do not yeah. speak. Yeah, wow. And I remember the first 10 minutes, I'm like, oh my goodness, I feel very female. Yeah. All these <laughs> eyes staring at me. Yeah. And then suddenly God started to minister and they forgot. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so <laughs> Dubai, I've ministered in Pakistan. I've ministered in many European nations, in Romania, in Norway, in Denmark, in Switzerland, in Sweden, in Spain, in Italy. And I, but I've never wow. sat down and written it all down. Wow. But many yeah. places. Wow. Yeah. And that's amazing to know that where you started, where you grew up, you would look out the window and you saw, you know, the plains cows. and cows <laughs> and to be everywhere you've been. You know, and something you told me earlier is just where God is willing to grab people from, you know, just like Saul, you know, willing to grab them from the tribe of Benjamin to be able to grab people from what is what people aren't really expecting. You know, yeah. it, it's like, you know, he chooses the foolish things of this world. Yeah. To yeah. Confound the wise. Exactly. Yeah. Just as the word says, exactly as that and so um it's amazing to see where you are now and where you're going to be mm -hmm. and truly i believe your life is a testament of surrender consistent consistent surrender if i can describe the testimony of joe Naughton and every other individual that has been able to help others find healing is that it requires a lot of surrender and humbleness in order to even minister in that kind of level you know we live in a in a society where you know what is mostly applauded is you know um and i don't and i'm not saying this in a negative way but usually the culture of the church where the person ha carries much knowledge and wisdom and and i believe that all those things are wonderful but i believe the root of so many things is deliverance i believe you know deliverance and of course the revelation of that deliverance is what sets so many people free and i i love it because to me it's that i rather have a pure heart before the lord 
then know so much about the Lord. Say, I casted out demons in your name. I did so much. And then come to him and he says, I don't know who you are. I never knew thee. You know, I, I don't know who you used my name, but I don't know anything about you. And so if there's advice that you would give to anybody else that says, you know, I feel like I have a traumatic past. I feel like I have things that I can't heal from. I have things that I don't know. I don't really know if I could get ever get out of this. What words of life hope that could you give to someone that's thinking like that right now? There is no trauma, no tragedy, no pain, no abuse that God cannot completely heal if we will surrender. And let me tell you what we surrender. We surrender our right to remain the way we were. Yeah. We surrender our reason for being. That's a big one. The way we are. That's a really big one because we hold on to our reasons. Yeah. If we will surrender it all, God can heal anyone. I've seen too many total transformations to doubt that there is no one that God cannot heal and he's able and he's willing and he's waiting. Wow. Wow. And, and so, you know, the, the simple answer is there's hope. There's always hope. So much hope. And the people who've come through some of the most difficult journeys mm -hmm. are the people who out the other side of their healing process will have the most to give. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that I, I, I don't think many people really understand that, but I think it's the people that are willing to say, the, the ones that are willing to sacrifice the most and give the most to God and let go of themselves are the ones that are willing that have an anointing to give so much more to the people. And so, you know, it, it's not really about how great they are, but it's about how great amount they have given and Absolutely. surrendered. And so, wow, you know, you, I, I have a great admirance for you, Prophet Joe. I really have such a great view of you because of your testimony. You have been such an example for each and every one of us that are in this room. We, you know, as soon as we found out that you were coming to this conference, like I've told you, we were all excited. We were all, you know, and you know, Jetsida and Josue can even tell you that, you know, even these guys here, like months ago, uh, I've said, Prophet Joe, you know, I, that's who I feel in my heart to come. And, and when it finally happened, it felt so real. It really did. But, you know, I thank God for your life. And, you know, I, I want to take this moment to just publicly, in a way, say thank you for everything you've done and for every sacrifice you've done. Thank you for flying out here. Thank you for being part of this because, you know, to the world's eyes, we may not be the first option for visitation, but yet you took the moment in time and to, and to search in God and to confirm through his presence to come here. And so thank you so much because I believe the, that is the mark of a true prophet, truly the one that follows where God says, you know, there's so many moments where the Lord tells a prophet, go here, go, go, go. And, you know, it's not the prophet saying, you know, what what is it do I desire? But it's what is your will, Lord? What is your, you know, plan? And so I thank you. Thank you so much for being part of this program. It's thank a you joy. so much for sharing your testimony, because that's not easy to share. You know, I, um, so many people are not ready to tell their testimony yet and, and 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 some people struggle to even share it even after you know but i believe a mark of healing is that you're able to share it absolutely. right absolutely absolutely yeah so thank you so so much prophet joe we love you we are grateful for you and i don't know where can people get your books joe norton.com JoeNaughton.com. Yeah, All right. And my I'll website put that up. has everything. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, make sure you give this video a like. And we will be right back with Prophet Joe Naughton. I'm excited. I'm so happy to have her here. And again, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you all next time.